I think the solution is for us to get a bigger bathroom. This is not working. <laughs> I'm so squished. Hey everybody. Okay. Welcome back to our channel. We have another snake update for you guys. Um, today she is actually due for her third injection and we just really quickly want to go over her quarantine tank and the importance of quarantining and why we're doing this. So we've been filming all the updates in our bathroom. Um, ideally, we want her as far away from our other snakes and animals as possible. And the guest bathroom is really the only thing we have because every other room in the house has some kind of animal in it, whether it's a snake, a lizard, a turtle, a bird, um, a fish tank, just every inch of our house is covered in tanks and covered in animals. So this was the only place for her. Now she's in a 20 gallon tank, which of course is not ideal, but this is quarantine. And this size tank definitely does give enough of a gradient for her to thermoregulate. We have a heat mat on this side, and then we have the cool side over here with a hide, uh, which we are just using an oatmeal box because it's disposable. And if it gets infected with ticks or mites, we can just toss it out. Paper towel, which is the best thing because as the ticks and mites come off, we can actually see them. We can monitor her if she's pooping, which she has. Uh, she also ate for us this week, which is really good and really, really exciting. So she's doing really well. We've only had her for a little over a week and she's already exceeded all of our expectations. So we are very happy with that. Now she still does not have a water dish because she is topically being treated for the ticks and the mites. And we put some of the silvadine on her wounds just to help them heal up. So we don't want her soaking in a bowl and then drinking it. So what we do, we do soak her daily um, in the morning and at night. So she gets to drink, she gets to soak, but she just doesn't have a bowl in here after her treatment. So I'm gonna pull her out and uh, we're gonna give her another injection. Now she did finish shedding. She looks great. I mean, except for this little area right here, you can zoom in. This is where her, uh, the most serious injuries that she has are in this little section right here. So she is having a rough shed in that little area. But again, we are doing daily soaks and betadine and we're also doing the silvadine cream, which is really helping. But other than that, she looks pretty good. She does have some eye caps stuck still. For those of you that um, aren't too familiar with snakes, they do have an ocular scale over the eye. And sometimes those scales get shed, whether they don't have enough humidity, like her, she was outside and, you know, rough conditions. Um, if they have an injury to the eye, might sometimes that, that scale get stuck. So we try to get it off with a Q-tip and some warm water and they're pretty stuck. So we may have to go back to the vet soon and have those removed. But uh, in the meantime, she's doing great and we are going to give her an injection. So this is the antibiotic injection that she's been getting. It's called Fortaz. Uh, these were already drawn up for us and frozen. So we thaw them out in our hands. We make sure it's warm. We roll it like this. And she actually does not get this full amount. She only gets 0.3. So I'm going to empty out the rest. We're going to try to once again record this injection, but it may be difficult. And obviously her safety and comfort comes first. So if we can't get it on camera, we can't get it on camera. Now, ideally you want to alternate sides when you do this. Um, the last injection, to be completely honest, I totally forgot to rotate sides, which is not going to kill her, but ideally you do want to rotate sides just so one side doesn't get too sore and she's getting these every three days. So since we did the injections on the left side, we're going to do it on the right side this time. You ready? You're such a good girl. This is just alcohol. Just cleaning the area. We're gonna locate the spine, which is right here. Go about a finger down, which is like right there. We're gonna go in between the scales. Sorry, baby. Perfect, and you can see that bubble right there. So now what I'm gonna do. Amazing. That's it. So this shed right here, when that comes off, that skin that's gonna open that back up, you can see it from under there. So that's pretty stuck on. Oh man, and I don't wanna pull it, so I guess we'll just keep uh, soaking her. But I think it's pretty inevitable that skin's gonna come off no matter what, and it is going to, um, to open up those injuries. But the injuries on her belly, if you guys remember, they're looking a lot better. That's still actually a little bit pink right there. 
but they've healed up really nicely. Um, after her shed, she looks so much better and it took a lot of the ticks off. So I actually, oh, I do see a couple. There's actually two right there. So she still does have ticks. We actually have not done the tick treatment yet because she just finished shedding. We wanted to wait until she was finished shedding to do it. And then we don't want to give her the injection the same day that we do the treatment because we don't want it to somehow get into her bloodstream. I don't know if I'm being paranoid, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. Um, I think we should remove these two ticks though since they're right here. So there's one right there. Now, I know what you're supposed to do, guys. Ideally, you wanna grab them by the head, you wanna twist and then pull. It's really hard. They're under the scales, they're so small, so I'm gonna do my best. I think I got everything that time. But, I mean, it's, it's way easier said than done. Is he alive? I don't think he's alive, no, look at him. I think these are dead, look at that. Mm -hmm. They're dead, but just stuck still. Yeah, I agree. I don't, I don't know if there's any live ticks. I don't think there are. Wow, it's amazing. Just soaking and her shedding. The soap. The soap. I mean, ideally, if if that didn't work, we would have used the uh, front line. I think we still should maybe just do one treatment just to be safe. Yeah, I agree. Let me see. But we can do that treatment tomorrow. There's one right there. There's two right there. Can you hold her? right here see yeah they're coming out so easily yeah i think they're dead yeah i think they are too but they can still i'm sure cause irritation and an infection you i wonder if the antibiotics are killing them is that possible oh there's another one here But you see how easily they're coming out now? Yeah, because they're dead. Amazing. Girlfriend, you look like a million dollars. A lot of people, I find it really interesting, are commenting that she looks like she's like het for pied. I'm not a ball python breeder. I'm not a ball python expert. I have no idea how you guys are able to tell that, but uh, that is pretty cool. Um, we are not going to breed her. I am not going to rehome her to anyone that's gonna breed her. I just think this snake has been through so much. I don't want her to be a breeder. I just want her to chill and live her life in peace and worry free. I really love her. You know, a lot of people have been asking us why we aren't going to keep her. And honestly, we just don't have space and we rescue all these animals and, and you know, we try our best to rehab animals. If we kept every single one, we wouldn't have space to keep rescuing. I mean, we're in our bathroom for crying out loud. I mean, maybe we can figure something out. I mean, I would, I would love to keep her. I love this snake. She has such a good temperament. And I mean, the fact that we like found her outside. She has a really cool story. She'd be a really good educational animal. Yeah, maybe we'll keep her then. You want to come live with us forever? Yeah. <laughs> She's so cute. Okay. So this week, guys, we're just going to continue the treatment as usual. Um, she also, like I said, pooped for us and we did feed her and she ate without a problem. We fed her a small mouse and she took it like a champion, which we were just like so relieved when that happened. And it was a frozen thought. It wasn't even live. So this week we're going to step up and give her a meal that is an appropriate size. We wanted to start off small just to see how she handled it. But this week we'll probably do like um, either a small or a medium rat. There she goes. You love your little oatmeal hide, huh? What a good girl. So that's it for this video, guys, and this update. She's doing great. We are just so happy with her progress. This week, we're going to continue with the antibiotic injections, soaking her, the iodine, maybe a treatment of the flea and tick medication, um, more injections. We're just going to 
um, you know, keep taking care of her and we're going to definitely feed her a bigger meal this week. So stay tuned. We also, once again, just want to thank everybody so much for the support and the love and following along on her journey. I mean, her story has reached over 13 million people. So the fact that we're able to educate and get people to to care about snakes. Um, I have people commenting that we've changed their opinions on snakes. People that don't even like snakes are commenting, saying they're in love with her and just love her story and are so grateful that we're helping her. So thank you guys so, so, so much.